Hi guys, I'm Tracy and welcome to today's video. So today I'm gonna go over the brushes that I keep on my vanity at all times. I've kind of um, amassed a big collection of brushes so I have to put some in storage just you know, just to make things a little bit easier for myself. But I do have some that I don't rotate because I just you know always want to have them available. So let's start out with the eye brushes. And I apologize, this one is discontinued. I'm pretty sure it's discontinued, but it's the Wayne Goss 3. I use that as my lay down um, brush. And it's just, uh, to me, I'm not sure if it's because this was my first large uh, squirrel blending brush that I ever used, but I haven't found anything better or just as good as this and um, it's what I, I always I have two of these. I always have one on my vanity. I just wanted to, to let you guys know that, you know, this is probably the first eye brush I use for most of my, my looks. And then I have a few blending brushes. And again, I'm sorry, this one is discontinued. It's the Koyuto P4, and it's a mix of gray squirrel and goat hair. And it's just such a great um, transition color brush and it does, you know, it kind of just does the first um, or, or the second shade so well. It also can line. But I also use, I have the Hokoto GS2 on, um, on my vanity because of the same reasons. This is Canadian Squirrel and I don't have a lot of brushes made of Canadian Squirrel that are in this shape. I, I believe this is the only one that is like, you know, this pinched ferrule, you know, on the smaller side. And it's just such a reliable brush for the same reason as this one. I use these interchangeably. Now I know, you know, these are kind of hard to get. I think a good alternative is the Hakuhodo J5523 or the Refer number one. So if you can't get your hands on, on these two, I would say those two would be my next choice. And then I'll go over the the smaller blending brushes that I always have on standby. That's the Sonya G Mini Booster and the Hakuhodo J5529. And I have to have a few of these um, available because I use these brushes pretty regularly. So the chances are one of them is dirty and so I have to kind of switch off but these are my two favorite like little mini blending brushes and they're just these are just amazing these are pretty a little bit easier to find as well okay now I'm going to start out then I'm going to start talking about the um, base brushes and the the refer 31 I used to put this into storage and I feel like I kept digging it out because this is such a good brush if you don't have a lot of time and you, if, if I want to just do my foundation really quick. So if I only have like three minutes, foundation is definitely one of the items that I put on. And this is the brush that I feel is the most reliable. It gives really good coverage. It doesn't require blending out of like streaks or anything. And it's, it's a large brush. So it covers a lot of, you know, a lot of surface area. And so it's just, I, you know, I talk about this one a lot. It's the largest, um, I think as far as like the surface area, it's my largest foundation brush. And, um, or maybe the Sonia G J Jumbo Base. It, that one's probably about the same surface area, but it's just a very reliable brush. Um, another thing I keep in mind when using my foundation brushes is how durable the brush is because I'm gonna be washing that brush a lot. So I have a similar one from Hakuhodo, but I don't wanna wash that one because I don't want it to, I don't wanna wear it down. So I just feel very comfortable using this because it's just such a well-made brush. Um, Refer sent this to me and I was just so surprised by how much I like this brush because this is not some, this is this dual fiber brush is not something I normally went for but I tried this one and I, I now I love these brushes so that is my one of my favorite um, base brushes foundation brushes and then this one is fairly new but I use it every day and and you can get this one. It's Hakuhodo, so 
I believe it's now like $65 or something but I got this before the price increase and to me this was so worth it it's the B539 and it's the little not little medium size um, concealer brush and it's made of Kalinsky hair and it's got that really fine point and this is so good for doing under eye concealer and like little areas like this um, I feel like this one will last a while because Kalinsky hairs are very are very coarse and so I'm washing this all the time but it's just you know is I don't think I'll put this one away at least not for a long time um, another alternative I have and I put this one away is the Chikuhoto Artist 12-2 now I just learned that there are brushes made for concealer that have Canadian squirrel hair that one is a weasel Canadian squirrel hair mix and it's a large eye brush I should have brought it out but um I've been using that for concealer thinking I wasn't supposed to but I don't know I think it's okay I mean you know if it's not going to be like your only concealer brush I, I don't think that would be such a bad idea I'll put a picture of it because I don't think I'm going to find it but if it weren't for this brush I would probably be using the Chikuhoto Artist 12-2 um, so that would be an alternative if you're someone that is okay with kind of wearing your brushes down and you have others if you're someone that has you know one concealer brush I wouldn't recommend getting a brush with Canadian squirrel hair but um, you know I might do something like uh, a video you know brushes that I use in like unconventional ways because I, I do that a lot but um, I would say this one is probably I, I don't see myself not using this one for a, for a long time okay and then so those are the eye brushes and the base okay so now the cheek brushes and um and I, this is just you know being completely honest this type these hakuhodo squirrel goat hair brushes these never go into storage none of them yeah because these these are probably some of my favorite brushes but um i'll name three that i use pretty often one is the g5544 and i this is my favorite bronzer brush right now and i've been kind of trying to use powder bronzer more sorry power br bl bronzer more because i'm i'm starting to get a little better at my makeup and i feel like the powder bronzer is much faster um to me now it's much faster and I feel comfortable using a brush if I have something like this I don't feel like I'm going to mess it up or anything or it's going to look too strong I know for some people this is not dense enough but I prefer a light fluffy brush for bronzer I've always um, felt that way and I yeah I use this one most days that I do powder bronzer and then another one this is fairly new but I've been using this one every chance I get and I haven't even washed it but I I do need to it's the B507 I got this you know before um, the price increase and it's just such a good brush for powder blush um, you can see right here in the demo how beautifully it puts on blush and it doesn't require any blending I do blend things out a little um, towards the end with finishing powder but um, you don't need to when you lay down your blush with this and it's just just amazing and um, I also use the G5545 for blush and powdering and highlighter so right here in the demo I'm going to use it with the tickle highlighter I've been using the benefit um, palette the big face palette that I got it's been over a year but I just saw benefit coming out with their new blushes and it, it just reminded me of how much I love their powder products so I've been using the um, the tickle highlighter hula bronzer and the Dallas blush and the um, California blush mine I think is too old but anyhow um, I just this is such a great multifunctional brush and I use this one pretty regularly but I'll be honest I don't put um, I don't put any of these brushes away they're always they have their own little cup and they have like rice in it so that I don't damage them um, in case you're a little bit newer 
Uh, Hakuhodo now charges a lot more for these brushes, so I don't see myself repurchasing any of these. So I'm just trying to take care of them as well as I can. So, so yeah, these never go away. And I have other brushes that are on my vanity right now, maybe like another 15, but I would say those are like, I could, you know, go to different ones. They're not like necessarily ones that I have to have, but um, something I did want to mention that I feel like will be on high rotation is the Ahoto LQ3, and it's the, Colin, uh, the Weasel uh, foundation brush. I've been really liking this, especially because uh, I haven't been doing as much like full coverage looks, and I think this one applies foundation a little bit lighter, a little bit more sheer. And it's, um, it also doesn't use up as much foundation. It doesn't soak up as much product for me. But I didn't want to put that this as like a favorite because I just got it. But I really do like this one. And um, yeah, I've been using this most days as well. So that's the Ahoto LQ3. And um, I forgot to put that in. And uh, there's other brushes I've been really liking but I really thought about it. Oh, another one, I, I'm pretty sure I keep the refer for available at all times for cream blush. I didn't put cream blush on today, so I didn't demo this, but I've demoed this one many, many times. And it's just the perfect density, it's the perfect size and shape for my face for cream blush. Um, so yeah, I don't think I put this in one away a, a whole lot, so. That pretty much is the brushes I wanted to talk about. Oh, I do want to show one brush um, that is new. So I'm not going to say like this is one I've never put in storage because I've only had it maybe a week. But that's a Mizuho MB133. This is the best liner brush that I've ever used. And I'm so glad I got it. I just got it because, you know, Mizuho's um, increasing their rates soon. So I figured maybe try another one. It's not a brand that I'm usually drawn to, but it. I'll, I'll show. I, I didn't do like my lower lash line liner, so I wanted because I want to show you guys how intense your um, shadow liner will go on with this brush. And I've been really liking it with this Dior, this really like inky, um, like purple shade. And it's just. You know, zoom in a little bit. See how easily the shadow went on and how intense of a line it made. I am so impressed with this brush. Um, I would actually get another one because, I mean, I don't know if I, I'm going to put another order in before July 1st, but it's just, it's just such a good brush. And it's right now with the exchange rate, it's $10. And it's made of weasel and synthetic hairs. And it's, yeah, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. It's the best shadow liner brush I've ever used. If you really want to like do a really intense dark shadow line, I don't use regular eyeliners. I just use eyeshadow and I swear it looks like I have gel liner when I use this brush. You see how dark that is? So yeah, this brush is so impressive. It's, you know, it's, um, I think it's like eight millimeters, but it has a very, very slight angle, which I like. It's also, because it's a little bit longer than some of my other liner brushes, it's flexible. So it's very comfortable and it's very thin. But I don't like these liner brushes that are really firm. I got one, I can't find it. I got a, a Hodo one kind of like this, but the hairs are so firm, it kind of hurts my eye when I'm using it. 
but this one is just like the perfect flexibility the perfect length and angle I'm really really oops I'm really liking this and I see myself getting another one and I see myself using this regularly for liner and I do have a lot of a lot of liner brushes. Another one that's really good is the Ahoto GS3. This is made of 100% um, weasel hair, but it's just a, it's a little different. It's rounded, and it's a little firmer. It doesn't have as much give, but it is it is fairly flexible. So I think either one of these are going to be great. Um, this one is cheaper, and I think a little bit. Um, it applies a little bit more heavily. So that's the MB133. Highly, highly recommend this one. Okay, and then, so that's it. Um, I did wanna share a few new products I got just because I want to. And I got, my. I finally got a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick and I've been wanting to for a long time. I've And I knew I was gonna love it, but I, um, I got the, the kissing formula in the color Penelope pink. I tried it a little bit last night, but I'm, and I got a new lip liner. The lip liner is called Super Size Me, Super Size Me. And it looks so beautiful with this. I just wanted to show you guys. It's a pretty light nude pink. I hear Morgan Turner talking about this formula how it's her favorite and for me this combination of the lip liner and this lipstick is like my lips but better shade this is pretty light so I would say if you're unless you want that really kind of nude look if you're any lighter than me this might be a little too light you might look like you have concealer on your lips because for me it's like it's just enough color but it's so comfortable. I'm sure a lot of you have already tried this. I'm now looking for a shade in the matte revolution because I, I like matte lips, but this one isn't shiny, it's not matte. It's just the perfect medium. It's thin, but I, I can still feel like, I still feel like I'm wearing lipstick, but it's very light. It actually reminds me of the, the Merit um, lipstick and the Chanel Rouge Allure Velvet. They both have that light you know it, it's they're kind of sheer but not really i think these are all these are all really really great formulas so um yeah that's really all i have for today was there anything else okay so yeah that's really what i have for today thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all next time bye